Dream Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with Black Adder season three, episode six. This will be the last episode of Black Adder that we watch. Uh, it's been a good show, and I see why you guys love it so much. I'm excited to move on to the next one. I think I'm gonna start Little Britain and see how that does. If you guys like that, I'll keep it going. Nah, switch it up. Uh, but before we jump in, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so I can suggest it. Oh, we got! Oh, Mr. Blackadder, leave me alone, Baldrick. If I'd wanted to talk to a vegetable, I would have bought one at the market. <laughs> Don't you want this message? No, thank you. God, I'm wasted here. It's no life for a man of noble blood being servant to a master with the intellect of a jugged walrus and all the social graces of a potty. Hey. I'm wasted too. I've been thinking of bettering myself. No, really? How? I applied for the job of village idiot of Kensington. <laughs> Get anywhere? I got down to the last two, but I failed the final interview. Oh, what went wrong? I turned up. <laughs> Such an idiot, he forgot to. Yes, I'm afraid my ambitions stretch slightly further than professional idiocy in West London. I want to be remembered when I'm dead. I want books written about me. I want songs I sung about me. And then hundreds of years from now, I want episodes from my life to be played out weekly at half past nine by some, some great heroic actor of the age. <laughs> and I could be played by some tiny tit in a beard. <laughs> Quite. Now, what's his message? I thought you didn't want it. Well, I may do. It depends what it is. So, you do want it? Well, I don't know, do I? It depends what it is. Well, I can't tell you what it is unless you want to know, and you said you didn't want to know, and now I'm so confused, I don't know where I live or what my name is. <laughs> Your name is of no importance, and you live in the pipe in the upstairs water closet. <laughs> oh, God. Was the man who gave you this, by any chance, a red-headed lunatic with a kilt and a claymore? Yeah, and the funny thing is, he looked exactly like you. Mm. My oh. mad cousin Makada, the most dangerous man ever to wear a skirt in Europe. Pipes <laughs> <laughs> that he made a haggis, sang Old Lang Syne, and punched me in the face. Why? Because I called him a not need Scottish pillock. An unwise action, Baldrick, since mad Makada is a homicidal maniac. My mother told me to stand up to homicidal maniacs. Yes, yeah, so and this is the same mother who confidently claims that you are a tall, handsome stallion of a man. <laughs> I should treat her opinions with extreme caution. <laughs> and I love chops and sauce, but I don't seek their advice. <laughs> I hate it when Makada turns up. He's such a frog-eyed, beetle-browed basket case. He's the spitting image of you. No, he's not. <laughs> about as similar as two completely dissimilar things in a pod. <laughs> uh, I'm just here to throw back banging on about this time. I've come south for rebellion. Oh, God, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Staying with Miggins, the time has come. Best sword in Scotland, insurrection, blood, large bowl of porridge. <laughs> the rightful claim to throne. He's mad. He's mad! He's madder than Mad Jack McMad, the winner of last year's Mr. Madman competition. <laughs> Oh my god. The walrus awakes. <laughs> <laughs> He's madder than Mad Mad McJad, the winner of last year's Mad Men competition. I love this show, bro. I'm sad this is the last episode, man. Free. The winner of last year's Mr. Madman competition. <laughs> ah, the walrus awakes. <laughs> ah, Black Adder. Notice anything unusual? Yes, sir. It's 11.30 in the morning and you're moving about. <laughs> Is the bed on fire? <laughs> well, I wouldn't know. I've been out all night. Guess what uh -oh. I've been doing? <laughs> Beagling, sir? <laughs> Better even than that. Sink me, Blackadder, if, if I haven't just had the most wonderful evening of my life. Tell me all, sir. Well, as you know, when I set out, I looked divine. At the party as I passed, all eyes turned. And I dare say, quite a few stomachs. <laughs> and then, these two ravishing beauties came up to me and whispered in my ear that they loved me. Oh my what god. What happened after you woke up, sir? <laughs> this was no dream, Black Adam. Five minutes later, I was in a coach, flying through the London night, bound for the ladies' home. Oh, and which ladies' home is this? 
A home for the elderly or a home for the mentally disadvantaged? <laughs> This was Apsley House. Do you know it? Yes, sir. It is the seat of the Duke of Wellington. Those ladies, I fancy, would be his nieces. Oh, so you fancy them too? Well, I don't blame you. Oh, my God. Oh, I spent a night of ecstasy with a pair of Wellingtons and I loved it. <laughs> so it may interest you to know that the Iron Duke has always let it be known that he will kill in cold blood anyone who takes sexual advantage of any of his Wellingtons. Oh, yes, but Big Nose Wellington is in Spain fighting the French, you'll never know. On the contrary, sir, Wellington triumphed six months ago. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. It would seem so. <laughs> yeah, you are bad at it. Yeah, hey, hey, you lived a good life, though. At least you went out happily with two ladies, you feel me? Uh, so at least you had a good time before your death. Because it's, it's a wrap. Have I got a prayer, have I, Blackadder? Against Throat Slasher Wellington, the finest blade his majesty commands? Not really, no. Well, then I shall flee. How's your French, Blackadder? Parfait, monsieur, but I fear France would not be far enough. Well, how's your Mongolian? Chang Hatang Matomatong. But I fear Wellington is a close personal friend of the chief Mongol. They were at Eton together. I'm doomed, doomed as the dodo. Oh my god, he's here! Wellington's here already! Oh, your oh. grace, forgive me, forgive me. I didn't know what I was doing. I was a mad, mad, sexually overactive fool. Sir, it's Baldrick. You're perfectly safe. Oh, hurrah! Ah, until six o'clock tonight. Ah, day. From the Supreme Commander, Allied Forces Europe, sir. Prince or pauper, when a man soils a Wellington, he puts his foot in it. <laughs> this is not a joke. I do not find my name remotely funny, and people who do end up dead. <laughs> I challenge you to a duel tonight at 1800 hours, in which you will die. Yours with sincere apologies for your impending violent slaughter, Arthur Wellesley, Duke of Wellington. God, nice sort of bloke. Oh, don't worry, sir, please. Just consider that life is a valley of woe filled with pain, misery, hunger, and despair. Well, not for me, it bloody isn't. As far as I'm concerned, life is a big palace full of good drink and comfy sofas. I speak, sir. Certainly not, Baldrick. The prince is about to die. The last thing he wants to do in his final moments is exchange pleasantries with a certified plum duff. <laughs> Easy, back, Let, Let's hear him out. Very well, Baldrick. We shall hear you out, then throw you out. <laughs> well, Your Majesty, I have a cunning plan oh which could get God. you out of this problem. Don't no, listen to him, sir. It's a cruel proletarian trick to raise your hopes. I shall have him shot the moment he's finished clearing away your breakfast. Uh, uh, wait, Blackadder, perhaps this disgusting, degraded creature is some sort of blessing in disguise. Well, if he is, it's a very good disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Did not our Lord send a lowly earthworm to comfort Moses in his torment? Nope. <laughs> well, it's the sort of thing you might have done. Well, come on, Mr. Spotty, speak. Well, Your Majesty, I just thought, this Wellington bloke's been in Europe for years, you don't know what he looks like, he don't know what you looks like, so why don't you get someone else to fight the duel instead of you? Hmm. I'm the Prince Regent, my portrait. That's the first freaking smart thing that I've ever heard this man say. That's the first smart thing that I ever heard. Baldrick say, yeah, why not just get somebody else to fight the duel? It hangs on every wall. Answer that, Baldrick. Well, my cousin Bert Baldrick, Mr. Gainsborough's butler's dog's body, he says that he's heard that all portraits look the same these days because they're painted to a romantic ideal rather than as a true depiction of the idiosyncratic facial qualities of the person in question. <laughs> Bert obviously has a larger vocabulary than you do. Oh, no, no, he's right, damn him. Anybody could fight the duel, or Willis would never know. All the same, sir, Baldrick's plan does seem to hinge on finding someone willing to commit suicide on your behalf. Oh, yes, 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 but he would be fabulously rewarded. Money, titles, castle. A coffin. A... That's not <laughs> the idol. Maybe Mr. Blackadder himself would fancy the job. Oh, my God. What a splendid idea. Excuse me, Your Highness. Trouble with the stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. Baldrick, does it have to be this way? Our valued friendship ending with me, cutting you into long strips and telling the prince that you walked over a very sharp cattle grid in an extremely heavy hat. <laughs> Mr. Blackadder, 
You was only just saying in the kitchen how you wanted to rise again. Now here the prince is offering you the lot. But tiny, tiny brain, the Iron Duke will kill me. To even think about taking him on, you'd have to be some kind of homicidal maniac who's fantastically good at fighting like Makada. There you go. There you go. It sounds like you got your, uh, your, your, your Persian, your golden stallion to bet on. Your dark horse. Like Makada. Like Makada can fight the duel for me. My apologies, sir. I was just having a word with my insurance people. And obviously, I would be delighted to die on your behalf. God's toenails, Blackadder. I'm most damnably grateful. You won't regret this, you know. Well, that's excellent. Uh, there's just one point, sir. Ray, the suicide policy. There is an unusual clause which states that the policyholder must wear a big red wig and affect a Scottish accent in the combat zone. Small print, eh? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Mrs. McGinnis. Now I to gather from your look of pie-eyed exhaustion and the globules of porridge hanging off the wall that my cousin Macada has presented his credentials. Oh, uh, yes, indeed, sir. You've just missed him. I hope he's been practicing with his claymore. Oh, I should say so. I'm as weary as a dog with no legs that's just climbed to Ben Nevis. Claymore <laughs> is a sword, Mrs. Billings. See this intricate wood carving of the infant Samuel at prayer? He whittled that with the tip of his mighty weapon with his eyes closed. Yes, excuse me. He bid me bite on a plank. There was a whirlwind of steel, and within a minute, three men lay dead, and I had a lovely new set of natural. <laughs> God dang! Well, look, just tell him to meet. Yeah, them teeth are just uh, them teeth are terrible. Whatever man he got them teeth from. Uh. Be here at five o'clock, will you, to discuss an extremely cunning plan? If all goes well, by tomorrow the clan of Macada will be marching the high road back to glory. Oh, lovely! Do you a nice packed lunch? <laughs> <laughs> Your Highness. This evening I will carve the Duke into an attractive piece of furniture with some excellent dental work. Your Highness. <laughs> Your Highness. What the heck? Oh! Oh, thank God it's you, Blackadder. I've just had word from Wellington. He's on his way here now. No, that's awkward. The Duke must believe from the very start that I am you. Well, 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 any ideas? There's no alternative, sir. We must swap clothes. Oh. Fantastic. Yes, dressing up. I love it. <laughs> it's like that story, uh, The Prince and the Porpoise. And the Pauper. <laughs> prince and the Porpoise and the Pauper. <laughs> oh my god, bro. He's such a freaking idiot. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Why, my own father wouldn't recognize me. Your own father never can. He's mad. <laughs> Unfortunately, sir, you do realize that I shall have to treat you like a servant. Oh, I think I can cope with that. Thank you, Blackadder. And you'll have to get used to calling me Your Highness. Your Highness. Your Highness. Your Highness. <laughs> oh, no, just Your Highness. Your Highness. That's what I said. Your Highness. Your Highness. Your Highness. Your Highness. <laughs> yes, let's just leave that for now, shall we? Complicated stuff, obviously. We have seen here. But what? Who? Where? Try to work it out, Baldwin. Two people you know well have exchanged coats, and now you don't know which is which. I say, I'm pretty confused myself. Which one of us is Wellington? <laughs> Wellington is the man of the door. <clears throat> of the porpoise? Oh my God! No. Hasn't arrived yet, sir. We'll just have to fill in as best we can with that. Oh my God. Sir, if you would let the duke in. Certainly, Your Highness, Your Highness. <laughs> and you better get out too, Baldock. Yes, Your Highness, Your Highness. <laughs> if only they had a brain cell between them. Ah. The Duke of Wellington. Can I the honour of addressing the Prince Regent, sir? You do? Mm. Congratulations, Highness. Your bearing is far nobler than I've been informed. Take my hand at once, sir, unless you wish to feel my boot in your throat and be quicker about it than you were with a door. Yes, my lord. But a duke, not a lord! God! You trained a dago dancing class? Shall I have my... God! Dang. People thrash him for you, Highness. Um, no, he's very new. At the moment, I'm sparing the rod. Yeah, fatal error. Give him an inch, and before you know it, they've got a foot. Much more than that, you don't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> now, sir, to business. I'm informed that your royal father grows ever more eccentric, and at present he believes himself to be 
a small village in Lincolnshire, <laughs> commanding spectacular views of the Neen Valley. <laughs> I therefore pass my full account of the war on to you, the Prince of Wales. Oh, that's excellent, thank you. We won. Signed, Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> We won. Say, well, it's... Two other trifling affairs, sir. The men had a whip round and got you this. Well, what I mean is I had the men randomly whipped until they got you this. <laughs> it's a Cirillo case, engraved with the regimental crest of two crossed dead Frenchmen emblazoned on a mound of dead Frenchman motifs. <laughs> Thank you very much. And the other trifling thing? Your impending death, I guess. Oh, yes, of course. Mine like a sieve. Mm, I cannot deny. I'm looking forward to it. Britain has the finest trade, the finest armies, the finest navies in the world. And what do we have for royalty? A mad crowd sausage sucker and a son who can't keep his own sausage to himself. <laughs> the sooner you're dead, the better. You're very kind. Now, you're no doubt anxious to catch up with the latest news of the war. I have here the most recent briefs from my general in the field. Yes, well, if you could just pop them in the laundry basket on the way out. <laughs> Yes, immediately. <laughs> now, let's turn to the second front, my lord. Ah, yes. Now, as I understand it, uh, Napoleon is in North Africa, and Nelson is stationed in... Alaska, your highness. In case Boney should try and trick us by coming via the North Pole. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to say... I'm not going to say anything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it slide. I'm not gonna say it. Yes, perhaps a preferable stratagem, Your Grace, might be to harry him amidships as he leaves the, the Mediterranean. Uh, Trafalgar might be quite a good <laughs> Trafalgar? Well, I'll mention it to Nelson. I must say, I'm beginning to regret the necessity of killing you, Your Highness. I've been told by everybody that the Prince was a confounded moron. No, 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 no. Oh, Helen Buckshot, here's that tiresome servant of yours again. Oh, budge up, budge up. <laughs> How dare you sit, sir, in the presence of your beggars? Get up! Oh, Christ, yes, I forgot. I'm... You speak when you're spoken to! You know this is going to be flayed across a gun carriage? Well? God! Hey! Sir, sir, I fear you have been too long a soldier. We no longer treat servants that way in London society. Why, I hardly touched the man. No, I think you hit him very hard. Nonsense! That would have been a hard hit. I just hit him like that. <laughs> no, sir. A soft hit would be like this. Whereas you hit him like this. <laughs> God dang, he didn't beat up. Excuse, Your Highness, Your Highness. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, sir, uh, but one has to keep up the pretense. I don't quite understand. You carry on the good work. Very well, sir. <laughs> hey, Earl! This is bloody coffee! I ordered tea! <laughs> Funny thing, fool, aren't you? I'd heard everywhere that the Prince was the imbecile, whereas his servant, Blackadder, was respected about the town. Now that I discover the truth, I'm disposed to beat you to death! <laughs> Tell me, do you ever stop bullying and shouting at the lower orders? Never! There's only one way to win a campaign. Shout, shout, and shout again! You don't think, then, that inspired leadership and tactical ability have anything to do with it? Mm. No! It's all down to shouting! <laughs> I hear that conditions in your army are appalling. Well, I'm sorry, but those are my conditions, and you'll just have to accept them. Oh, <laughs> my Ladies God. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening, when I shall kill you. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe I shall kill you. Johnson, I've never been so much as scratched. My skin is as smooth as a baby's bottom, which is more than you can say for my bottom. One <laughs> point, <laughs> sir. I should perhaps warn you that while dueling, I tend to put on my lucky wig and regimental accent. No, that won't help you. It would take a homicidal maniac in a claymore and a kilt to get the better of me. <laughs> well, that's handy. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm not leaving this kitchen until that man is out of the house. Oh, God. It's all right, Your Majesty. Don't worry, I'll deal with this. Hello, Baldrick. I've brought your buns. Where's 
Mr. Blackadder? Oh, not upstairs, still running about after that quartz willing tadpole brain smelly boat. <laughs> I don't know who you mean. <laughs> Prince George Baldrick. His oh boots smell so bad, a man would need to have his nose amputated before taking them off. <laughs> well, that's what Mr. Blackadder says. <laughs> that's a joke. Didn't you write a little poem about him last week? No, I didn't. Oh, you did. Oh in the my winter, God. it's cool. In the summer, it's hot. But all the year round, Prince George is a clot. <laughs> a lovely. I said Prince George is a lovely. Oh, well. I'd better be off, anyway. Uh, tell Mr Blackadder to expect Mr Macadder at five o'clock, uh, as soon as that fat Prussian truffle pig has got his snout wedged into a bucket of tea cakes. <laughs> Oh my God, the dish! Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Prince George might not like the disrespect. He, he, he might not enjoy this disrespect that they've been talking about. I think it must be next door you're wanting, strange woman who I've never seen before, Mrs. McGinnis. <laughs> Baldrick? Yes, Your Highness. Is it true? Did you really write a poem about how lovely I am? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Blackadder loves you too. Well, I must say, I find that very touching. I do. Ah, I wish they wouldn't keep on doing that. Well, goodbye, sir. And may the best man win. I.e. me. Your tea, sir. You're late! Well, have you been for in India? <laughs> Salon? <laughs> China! Show me the way out. I don't want to die of old age before I get to the front door. Ah, McGinnis. So where's McCather? I thought he was going to be here at five o'clock. Yes, I'm sorry. He's just popped out. You look ever so similar to each other, you know. It's quite eerie. Look, did you tell him to be here or not? I did, I did. You just seem to keep missing each other. I, I can't imagine why. I'll tell you why. That's because there's no coffee shop in England big enough for two blackadders. Ah, good day, Cousin Magadda. I trust you are well. I'm well enough. And Morag? She bides fine. And how stands that mighty army, the clan Magadda? They're both well. <laughs> I always thought that Jamie and Angus were such fine boys. Angus is a girl. <laughs> Angus is a girl. Oh, tell me, cousin. I hear you have a cunning plan. I do, I do. I want you to take the place of the Prince Regent and kill the Duke of Wellington in a duel. Aye? And what's in it for me? Enough cash to buy the Outer Hebrides. What do you think? Fourteen shillings and sixpence. <laughs> oh, it's tempting. <laughs> but I've got an even better plan. Why don't I pretend to be the Duke of Wellington and kill the Prince of Wales in a duel? Then I could kill the king and be crowned with the ancient stone bonnet of Macadar. And I shall wear the granite gown and limestone bodice of MacMiggins, queen of all the herds. Look, for God's sake, Macadar, you're not Rob Roy. You're a top kipper salesman with a reputable firm of Aberdeen fishmongers. Don't throw it all away. If you kill the prince, they'll just send the bailiffs round and arrest you. Oh, blast. I forgot the bailiffs. So we can return to our original plan then? No, I'm not interested. I'd rather go to bed with the Loch Lomond monster. And besides, I have to be back in the office on Friday. I promised Mr. McNulty I'd shift a particularly difficult bloater for him. <laughs> the whole thing. I'm off home with Mixie. Yes, yes. Show me the glen where the kipper roams free. And forget Morag forever. No, never. We must do right by Morag. We must return to Scotland and you must fight her in the old Highland way. Bare-breasted and each carrying an eight-pound baby. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Bare-breasted and each carrying an eight-pound baby. Oh, okay, that's the old Highland way. Okay, that's a different. That's the <laughs> Babies! Oh, oh, you're a woman of spirit. I look forward to burying you in the old Highland manner. Farewell, <laughs> Black Arrow, you spineless goon. <laughs> Fortune vomits on my eider down once. <laughs> ah, Black Adder. It has been a wild afternoon full of strange omens. I dreamt that a large eagle circled the room three times. 
and then got into bed with me and took all the blankets. <laughs> and then I saw that it, it wasn't an eagle at all, but a large black snake. Also, Duncan's horses did turn and eat each other, as usual. <laughs> good portent for your duel, do you think? Not very good, sir. I'm afraid the duel is off. Off? As in huh? sod. <laughs> I'm not doing it. My thunder, here's a pretty game. You will stay, sir, and do duty by your prince, or I shall... Oh, what? You port brain twerp. I've oh. looked after you all my life. Even when we were babies, I had to show you which bit of your mother was serving the drinks. <laughs> oh, oh, please, please, you've got to help me. I, I don't want to die. I've got so much to give. I, I want more time. A poignant plea, sir, enough to melt the stoniest of hearts. But the answer, I'm afraid, must remain, you're going to die, fat pig. <laughs> wait, wait. I'll give you everything. Ooh. Everything? Everything. The money, the castles, the jewellery? Yes. The highly artistic but also highly illegal set of French lithographs? Everything. <laughs> the amusing clock where the little man comes out and drops his trousers every half hour? <laughs> yes, yes, all right. Very well, I accept. A man may fight for many things. His country, his principles, his friends. The glistening tear on the cheek of a golden child. But personally, I'd mud wrestle my own mother for a ton of cash, an amusing clock, and a sack of French porn. <laughs> <laughs> right, Baldwin, now here's the plan. When he offers me the swords, I kick him in the nuts and you set fire to the building. <laughs> in the confusion, we claim a draw. Yes. All right? Yeah, Your Highness, let's be about our business. Now, don't forget, Baldwin, you when I... Come <laughs> choose your stuka. What, are we going to tickle each other to death? <laughs> no, sir, we fight with cannon. But I thought we were fighting with swords. Swords? What do you think this is, the Middle Ages? Only girls fight with swords these days. Oh, my God. Stand by your gun, sir. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Wait a minute. What do you mean they fight with cannons, bro? Cannons? <gasps> what you mean, Kenny? Stand by, cannon for loading procedure. Stoke, muzzle, Grant, crank, staunch. Congratulations on choosing oh, the God. Armstrong Whitworth <laughs> four-pounder cannonet. <laughs> Please read instructions carefully, and it should give you years of trouble-free maiming. <laughs> Check elevation, chart trajectory, prime views, aim. Look, wait a minute. Fire! Oh, Mr. B, sir, please help me get his coat off. Leave it, Baldry. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Blood's hell to shift. I want to get it in soap. <laughs> I like a man, sir, in combat. You think so? Damn it, we must build a better world. When will the killing end? You don't think I, too, dream of peace? You don't think I, too, yearn to end this damn dirty job we call soldiering? Frankly, no. My highest <laughs> on this earth is that Baldrick be sold to provide funds for a Blackadder Foundation to promote peace and to do research into the possibility of an automatic machine for cleaning shoes. <laughs> so I charge the... the... His Highness is dead. Actually, I'm not sure I am. Fortunately, that cigarillo box you gave me was placed exactly at the point the cannonball struck. <laughs> I always said smoking was good for you. No! Oh, oh, oh. Honor is satisfied. God clearly preserves you for greatness. His Highness is saved. Hurrah! Um, no, actually. It's me. I'm His Highness. Well done, Bladders. Glad you made it. What in the name of Bonaparte's balls is this fellow doing now? No, no, I really am the Prince. It was all just larks. An uncommon fine larks at that, I thought. I have never, in all my campaigns, encountered such insolence. Your master survives an honourable duel, and you cheat him like a French whoopsie. I can contain myself no longer. Oh, my. I die. I hope men will say of me that I did duty by my country. I think that's pretty unlikely, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'd try for something a bit more realistic. Like what? Uh, you hope that men will think of you as a bit of a sicky? <laughs> all right, I'll hope that. Um, toodaloo, everyone, let you know and all that. Here for His Majesty the King of England. Somebody told me my son was here. I wish him 
to marry this rose bush. And I want to make the wedding arrangements. Here I am, Daddy. <laughs> this is the Iron Duke, Wellington, commander of all your armed forces. Yes, I recognize the enormous cock. <laughs> the hero, a man of wit and discretion. Bravo. You know, my son, for the first time in my life, I'm a real fatherly feeling about you. People may say I'm stark raving mad and say the word penguin after each sentence. <laughs> I believe we too can make Britain great. You as the Prince Regent and I as King Penguin. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Will you come and dine with us at the palace? My family have a lot to thank you for. Yeah, it'll be a great pleasure. Your father may be as mad as a balloon, but I think you have the makings of a fine king. Ah, a wunderbare Hochzeit, yeah. Oh, and Baldrick, clear away that dead butler, will you? <laughs> a new star in heaven tonight. A new freckle on the nose of the giant pixie. <laughs> um, no, actually, Baldrick, I'm not dead. Uh, you see, I had a cigarillo box too. Look. Oh, damn, I must have left it on the dresser. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Black Adder got everything he ever wanted. That's all we got. You guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon and drop it in the comment section. It's your boy Dini out.